Uh, I would like to recognize uh, some officials who are here. I, I believe only we have one person at, at this time, Jack Lely. He is uh, the council of Bro uh, city of Brockton. And hopefully we'll have other people, folks, to join us. School school committee woman Joyce Azak. Hi. Hi. How are Welcome. You? Thank you. And uh, I'm going to ask, go around and ask our project team to introduce themselves, please. Where are they? Okay, Ed. Sorry. Ann Carrington from Arlington Type and Mailing. I'm actually here to do a verbatim transcript. Yeah, Jerry. Jerry Doherty, Mass DOT, the right of way section. And Dan Murphy, CDM Smith with the design consultants work for that town of, uh, work the, the city, city of Brockton. Barton. And? Sean Handy, Mass DOT, District 5, Office of Taunton. Thank you. Um, the notice of the hearing was published at the Enterprise on January 16th and 23rd, and on Abington Mariner on uh, 19th and 26th. Uh, we're trying to improve how we communicate our hearings to uh, folks. So if you could uh, please, by show of hand, um, I'm gonna ask a few questions on what we <coughs> heard of, of, the, of the hearing tonight. Uh, did, did anyone hear it from Enterprise or you and Marion? Okay. Two, yeah, two people, okay. And how about any other local newspaper, anyone? Uh, anyone heard about it from um, a mass DOT official? Uh, a city or town official? Jack Lally. That's all. We have. <laughs> Jack so three people. <laughs> uh, anyone saw that on the uh, city or town website? We did post it, I believe. Friends or neighbors? No. Okay. Thank you very much. A copy of the notice is actually included in your handout, and it will be. Uh, uh, attached to the final transcript of the hearing tonight. Uh, the purpose of the hearing is to give us an opportunity to uh, present the project to you and also to record your input on the project. Um, the, uh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I said sorry. I cannot multitask. <laughs> okay, uh, the project is improvements at the intersection of Queens, North Quincy Street, Boundary Ave, and Chestnut Street in Abington and Brockton. It's at the town line, so it borders. You know, it falls into both towns. Uh, the design is at uh, preliminary stage, and what it means is after we uh, hear your input tonight. We will uh, review it and we'll progress design to final, uh, final design and uh, finalize the um, pri uh, plans for eventual construction, for advertising and construction. The, the project cost is estimated to be at 1.2 million at this time and it comes from uh, federal funding. Uh, the current funding designated for the project is, one is uh, CMATCH, which is con congestion mitigation air quality, and a little bit of funding is also coming from HSIP, Highway Safety Improvement Program. Um, as we move towards, um, you know, final design, sometimes funding changes. But in most, most of federal fundings are 80% uh, of the project cost is covered by Federal Highway Administration and the remaining 20% is covered with, uh, by Mass DOT. And for a, this project must be programmed in state improvement, uh, transportation improvement pro, uh, pro, uh, program in an appropriate fiscal year in order for Mass DOT to solicit bid, bid from contract. The cost that I mentioned, it does not include the right of way acquisition cost, which is um, will be covered by the municipalities. Um, we, uh, we anticipate at this time the uh, design be completed in winter, uh, fall and winter of 2019, 
and once the construction starts, we'll, we estimate that will be take one construction season, depending on when we start the project. Um, so as you, many of you know, and I've spoke to some before the, um, we start, um, there are the issues, the major issues with this in intersection are safety, speed, the crashes that we have experienced, um, and intersection layout, configuration. So there's not a very defined path, travel path. And so also there is very limited lack of uh, pedestrian and bicyclist uh, accommodation. So the focus of the project is to improve those by uh, we're constructing a roundabout. We'll talk about that, that and how it is different than rotary. And <laughs> ADA compliant sidewalks and shoulders for uh, use by bicyclists. In a few uh, minutes, Dan will be explaining the projects uh, in more details to us. But before that, I'm going to ask Jerry to explain the right of way procedures to us. Thank okay. you, Shapa. Good evening, everybody. When the Commonwealth, acting through its Massachusetts Department of Transportation Highway Division, indicated it would accept this $1.2 million project for funding, the municipality accepted certain responsibilities. One of those responsibilities is to acquire all the necessary rights in private and public land for the design, construction, and implementation of the project. My function is to review and recommend procedures that your municipality will utilize in acquiring these rights. The procedures must comply with both federal and state regulations. The current design indicates that three permanent easements and ten temporary easements will be required from properties. Your municipality may acquire the needed rights through a combination of donation, eminent domain, deed grants, permits, or right of entries. Frequently, the municipalities will appeal for the donation to minimize the acquisition cost for your community. However, donations and right of entries are not required and the property owners are entitled to an appraisal and just compensation. This project cannot be advertised until the proposed right-of-way is secured and a right-of-way certificate is issued. Effective property owners' rights are protected under Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 79, and because this project is receiving federal funds, the property owners' rights are further defined under Title III of the Real Property Acts of 1970 as amended. I'll be happy to answer any general questions concerning the right-of-way activity during the open forum and will be available after the hearing for any specific questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, I'm going to take a minute to introduce. Okay. Uh, how about the city council? Hi, yes. Uh, Representative Michelle Dubois. Well, we introduced. Oh, great. Okay. Should I just? I just want to introduce you, and we'll be talking. We'll, we'll give a chance, have a chance to, for you to make comments. Wonderful. I'm very happy to be here with all of you. I think it's a great project. Thank you. Um, and uh, City Councilor Cheyenne Barnes. She was here a second ago. Okay. So she'll arrive later. Okay. Now uh, Dan will be. Um, giving us some uh, um, details of the project and have in mind that um, the design is not final. And uh, once Dan is done with telling us about the project, we're going to open the uh, hearing to uh, everyone else. I'll explain some procedure, what the procedures are, and then we'll open it to, uh, to all of you. Uh, so I'm going to ask you to please Try to hold your questions till, till he is done so we can just progress the hearing to the as planned. All right. Yes. Great. Thank you very much. And again, thank you all for coming. Uh, we look forward to, to sharing the project with you, getting your input on it. Um, as Shapar has mentioned, there are a lot of concerns that have brought about the need for the project. Um, just to give you a little bit about the history of the public outreach. Um, most of you know that it, uh, it's a high crash location. Mass DOT identifies it as such. 
MassDOT conducted a road safety audit, which is a study of the intersection based on geometry, operations, engineering, a number of different things that you look at the intersection, you decide, you know, where can we do better, what's wrong, how can we fix it. So road safety audit was conducted in November of 2013. Um, there were a number of small short-term items that were recommended, uh, additional signage, uh, new signage, some new lights, replacement lights, trimming back of some shrubs, and those were implemented immediately by the city of Brockton and the town of Abington in order to make some short-term improvements to the intersection. Other long-term improvements were recommended. Uh, one was reconstruction of the intersection to either a signalized or a roundabout. We had an, in an initial public information meeting at the Baker School back in February of 2015. Some of you were there. And uh, we presented the results of the road safety audit, some traffic volume, some crash data, some crash analysis information, and talked about some potential intersection improvement concepts. At that point, we presented a, a real rough signal concept and a real rough roundabout concept. And since then, we've progressed to the 25% design that we have today. Uh, we held a MassDOT utility coordination meeting um, in the field, on site, November 2nd, 2017, with representatives from all the different utilities to identify potential impacts, to, uh, to see what changes would need to be made, utility pole relocations, things like that, in order to incorporate those into the 25% design plans. Um, some of the utility pole relocations and some of the resulting utility easements will be incorporated at the next level of design. And we've had ongoing coordination with uh, the town and, and the city in order to talk about different elements of the project and identify responsibilities. And again, City of Brockton is the project proponent together with the Town of Abington. Town of Abington is in a, in a cost share agreement for the payment of the design. And obviously, each municipality, as Jerry stated, will be responsible for right of way uh, impacts. CDM Smith firm that I work with is responsible for the design under contract with the city and uh, MassDOT's highway division is responsible for administering the design process and eventual oversight of construction and Federal Highway Administration is obviously overseeing all of it so <coughs> most of you are familiar with the project area we have North Quincy Street runs north south and just to the right of North Quincy Street is the Abington line Chestnut Street is in Abington. Boundary Ave is across the intersection. You've got the uh, Chestnut Glen and Abington Glen residential developments, as well as much residential development on the other side of North Quincy Street. Can everybody hear me okay? Good. And just a little bit closer, you can see the intersection. Project limits are approximately shown. Randolph Avenue would be uh, the extent to the west and then up a distance on Chestnut Street, as well as tying in on the north and south limits on North Quincy Street. Why do we need this project? Shapar gave you a quick summary of it, but obviously it's a high crash location. We know that. There have been some, uh, a number of crashes, fatalities even, and uh, we want to make the improvements necessary to prevent those kind of things. We want to mitigate that. Um, so we want to try to, we want to mitigate the speeding, we want to improve sight lines, we want to improve the operation of the intersection. Some of the issues that were identified in the field through the road safety audit and through conversations with others and discussions at uh, traffic commission meetings are the intersection geometry, undefined paths of travel. Um, I'm going to skim through these. I've got some photographs and we'll talk about them in more detail. Uh, lengthy pedestrian crossings, a number of items that affect intersection safety high speeds, limited sight lines, um, deficient pedestrian and bicycle, on, bicycle accommodation. Uh, there's a sidewalk on one side of North Quincy Street, no sidewalks on Boundary Ave, no sidewalks on Chestnut Street. And here we have a couple of uh, representative photographs. If you look at the intersection geometry, you've basically got a sea of wide open pavement. It looks pretty simple right here. There's not a lot of cars on it at the time. But imagine if somebody on North Quincy Street was trying to turn left, and they can turn left pretty much anywhere in this area. You're trying to guess. If you're this guy coming out, you're trying to figure out where that left turning car is going to be. You're trying to find your gap in the midst of high-speed North Quincy Street traffic. You may be trying to cross 
You may be trying to uh, guess when the guy across the street is going to try to cross, come over to Chestnut Street. So you've got conflicting turns, conflicting movements, and wide open pavement, so there's really no control as to where those turns are going to take place. And that's a challenge. The other thing that you have is lengthy pedestrian crossing. This picture kind of says it all. We couldn't contain that pedestrian crossing within that photograph. That's a 90 foot long pedestrian crossing with uncontrolled traffic. And by the way, that's the only crosswalk at that intersection. Um, intersection safety. High speeds on North Quincy Street. Again, that makes it difficult for side street traffic to enter the stream of traffic. Crashes result from driver frustration. Imagine waiting in the queue. Some of you don't have to imagine, you've done it many times. You're waiting in the queue trying to get to the street so that you can make your turn onto North Quincy Street. The longer you wait, the more likely you are to try to accept a gap that's too small for you to fit into. Um, and that can be the result of uh, a crash. That can result in a crash. Again, you see the queues on, on Chestnut Street coming down. And then deficient pedestrian and bicycle accommodation. You've got the sidewalk only on the west side of North Quincy Street. There's a lack of marked ADA compliant sidewalks and pedestrian ramps for pedestrians to use, marked crossings. And there are narrow paved shoulders for bicycles uh, on North Quincy Street, less so on Boundary Ave and Chestnut Street. You can see you don't really have adequate width behind that pole in order to get through that sidewalk. So it doesn't meet ADA compliance. Um, it's important to note that there is a, a bus stop over here on the other side of North Quincy Street. No sidewalk, no crossing. Um, the day I was out taking these pictures, there was a gentleman that was vision challenged. He had his white cane and I watched him walk down Chestnut Street along the shoulder straight across this lane, and I personally was pretty afraid. Now this gentleman has obviously done this for quite a while because he was apparently very comfortable with the traffic. He walked up to the edge of the road with his cane, traffic gave way, he crossed North Quincy Street and continued on his way. At the very least, he should have a sidewalk with detectable warning panels so he knows when he reaches the edge of the road and things like that. We need to make better accommodation for pedestrians. So the project goals, in order to improve intersection geometry, we're proposing a roundabout. A roundabout will channelize traffic and reduce points of conflict. We want to improve intersection safety by reducing travel speeds on approaches and through the intersection, reducing crash risk and severity. We want to improve efficient pedestrian accommodation by adding sidewalks, pedestrian ramps, crosswalks, and improve efficient bicycle accommodation by providing adequate bikeable shoulders, bike lanes, uh, adequate facilities for those that choose to transport by bicycle. So our project scope, as we've kind of outlined and hinted, is to convert the intersection to a roundabout. A roundabout is a continuous flow intersection. It will serve to channelize traffic through that intersection. It will reduce traffic speeds. It reduces risk and severity of crashes. The splitter islands that I'll show you in a second, they, um, they do two things. One is to affect the change in the speed of traffic. They've got to slow down as they approach that island, the, narrow, the lane narrows, and they've got to get ready to trans circum travel the roundabout, excuse me. Um, but it also improves pedestrian access because now your pedestrian only has to cross one lane of traffic at a time. There's a pedestrian refuge in the island. They've got to look left, cross the left traffic. They've got a refuge, they can look right, cross the right traffic. One lane at a time, instead of that 90 foot long crosswalk. <coughs> we want to add new sidewalks to the east side of North Quincy Street, to the north side of Chestnut Street to the project limit, and then the town of Abington will pick up the sidewalk from the project limit to the residential development of the street. The north side of Chestnut Street and then both sides of Boundary Avenue will have new sidewalks. Crosswalks on all four approaches, again, into the Splitter Island to provide pedestrian refuge and shorter crossings. The project will add bicycle lanes on North Quincy Street. And part of the, um, part of the design of a roundabout is to encourage 
cyclists, particularly those that are maybe inexperienced, to stay out of the circulatory roadway. So we provide facilities for cyclists to get off of the road before they get to the roundabout and onto a shared use path to circumvent the roundabout itself. So they get off the road to the shared use path, they walk their bike as a pedestrian along the shared use path, and then they get back onto the road once they've passed the roundabout. Sharrows or bicycle signing on, by, on uh, Boundary Avenue in order to indicate the presence of bicycles. And then new advanced warning signage, pavement markings, and lighting. The roundabout will be well lit. Give you an idea of project schedule. We've completed the 25% design submittal. Today obviously marks our design public hearing where we get feedback from the public, present our proposed design at this time. Uh, next step would be to complete final design. Jerry will work with the communities on right of way and um, permitting is completed for fall winter 2019. And we're showing a, an anticipated construction start here of spring summer 2020, but the hopes will be that we'll get started a little bit earlier than that. Um, so that may be, uh, yeah. So that's our schedule at this point. How will traffic be affected during construction? It's one intersection. It is a little bit complicated in that it's a roundabout. It's a significant traffic change from your four-way intersection right now. Uh, there's a little bit of fill on the boundary ab side. It's going to come up maybe a foot. It's going to come down maybe a foot on the Chestnut Ab side, Chestnut Avenue side. And um, in order to do that, we may need to close Chestnut Street for a short time or Boundary Avenue for a short time in order to affect the grades and get everything tapered in. Um, but again, it'll be a short time. Proper detour signage will be in place. Traffic on North Quincy Street would be maintained. So when looking at the alternatives, one of the alternatives presented was a traffic signal and the other was roundabout. So these are just a few points about the difference between the traffic signal and the roundabout. Traffic signal obviously requires the installation, power, and maintenance of traffic signal equipment. Increases the delay of vehicles traveling, particularly on North Quincy Street at this time. There, there's no delay for folks on North Quincy Street, but now if you introduce a traffic signal, they're all having to stop occasionally at a red light on North Quincy Street in order to allow side street traffic to come out. So there'll be vehicles idling there that may not be today. Um, increased number of rear end accidents and it may not mitigate angle accidents. Traffic lights can still have a good number of <coughs> angle accidents with red light running and those that are trying to beat the yellow. Um, often you see an increased number of rear end accidents because people approaching the intersection don't realize that the person in front of them is slowing or has stopped for the red light. Um, this is a particular concern at this location because on the south side of the intersection, you've got a crest vertical curve a distance away. So if there's a red light and some cars are queued, somebody may come over that curve and not know that there's traffic stopped. So it's, it's uh, sight distance is a concern with the traffic signal at this location. On the other hand, the roundabout handles more traffic more efficiently than a signalized intersection. Um, it reduces the points of conflict. If you look at an intersection diagram, it's signalized. You get all kinds of movements for vehicles and turns and at a roundabout, it's pretty simple. You've got conflict points wherever traffic enters the roundabout, and traffic wherever, uh, conflict point wherever traffic exits the roundabout. So at a four-way intersection on a roundabout, you've got four, eight, eight points of conflict potentially with vehicles. Uh, frequency and severity of crashes are reduced. At a roundabout, you're looking at side swipe accidents. Um, rarely angle accidents, rarely head-on accidents, um, highly unlikely, unless somebody's going the wrong way around your roundabout. Um, and slowing traffic speeds on the approaches. So just to give you a quick look, obviously on the left is the existing intersection. A lot of pavement. That long crosswalk that we mentioned. And then on the right you see the roundabout, the 25% design roundabout with the uh, center island. You see a truck apron in the center will be, uh, when I say truck apron, it's probably like uh, a cobbled cement type of pattern so that larger trucks, when they go around, their trailer can um, ride along that truck apron, but vehicles, passenger cars, will stay on the outside of that in order to stay within the circulatory roadway. 
You can see the splitter islands. You can see the pedestrian crossings. Pedestrian crossings are intentionally placed one car length back from the circulatory roadway. So instead of trying to cross in front of the guy that's looking for his spot in the roundabout traffic, the car that's looking to enter the roundabout traffic is, is um, paused to enter, and the pedestrian cross safely behind that vehicle. Um, you can see the sidewalks. Again, sidewalks on the west side of North Quincy Street, sidewalks on the east side of North Quincy Street, a sidewalk on the north side of Chestnut Street, and sidewalks on both sides of Boundary Avenue. You can see that the sidewalks are a little bit wider around the circulatory roadway, around the roundabout, in order to create that shared use path for both bicycle and pedestrian traffic. Uh, let's see. If you haven't had a chance to see that already, we do have pavement marking and signing plans on the wall over there on the side. Uh, in case you wanted to look at it in a little more detail. And again, just a, a closer up look at it. Granite, you, the sidewalk shade use path will have granite curb and around the roundabout, you'll have a grass strip between the roundabout and the shade use path. As far as environmental permitting, we do have to do an environmental notification form file that through DEP uh, due to impact on more than five mature shade trees of 14 inches diameter or greater and local conservation commissions. So that's the, uh, the rundown of our present 25% design and we will ask that you take a handout in your handout there's a feedback form you can provide comments send it back in there's an email address that you can provide comments uh, contact Shapar uh, or others that are listed in the handout. Support. The purpose of the hearing is to solicit your input. As the plans are not final, uh, we may not be able to do, uh, answer all your questions or respond to all your comments. We'll do our best. Um, I, I'm going to ask whoever wants to ask a questions to please come to the uh, microphone here. Actually, one of them is taping. Uh, your comments for the verbatim transcript. Um, please identify yourself with name, first name, last name. Please spell your last name and um, tell us whether you're um, a, a s official or a, a butter's interest re uh, residence. And um, all this is required for uh, enable for us to obtain a ver verbatim transcripts of tonight's hearing. Um, also, please, uh, if you have a conversation, don't speak over each other because we won't be able to recognize your comments on the tape. As Dan mentioned, the last page of your in your handout, there is a mailing sheet. Uh, if you want to send us written comments or questions, please use that. Um, if you, you can leave it here with me tonight or you can mail it to the department. If you mail it within 10 days of tonight's hearing, it will become part of the official records of the hearing. And uh, finally, our uh, normal procedure is to ask whether any of the officials, local, state officials have any comments to add. And I know I introduced a few, uh, few people, but other people joined us. So I'm going to uh, please ask um, our officials to introduce themselves, and then please do make any comments, you know, if you like for, for everyone here. Please. Hi, everybody. Um, Dan. Dan, is there any way you could um, move the the picture back to the intersection itself? Yes. So is this the one that's taping? Yes. Okay, we good? Yes. Great. So my name is Michelle Dubois. I'm a state representative, D-U-B-O-I-S for the 10th Plymouth District, which includes this intersection. And I had been the city councilor for this area when it, the project first started and many of the fatalities had occurred. It's pretty scary. So one of my questions, is um, I don't know if Dan can answer this, but at the bottom, the bottom part of the intersection coming up boundary, 
that you, one better? The bigger one's better. Um, so I guess that's at like seven o'clock, right? Um, that's a pretty significant drop down there for the folks that live there. How are you anticipating being able to, like, I see the green space, the green color actually comes closer to that home. And if I under, if I remember correctly, there's a fence and then behind that fence, there's like a 30 foot drop off. Am I right? Like in the backyard, it goes like straight down. There's a good drop. Yeah. How are you anticipating to deal with that? And have you talked to the residents that live there? We haven't had the conversations with the residents yet, but that green space, the reason it is so wide is because it does have to tie in. We've got to slope that down to meet the existing property. So what will you do? Will you, um, will you raise that green space up? I'm just trying to wonder, so if like, Right now, where the sidewalk, I believe you have the sidewalk there, I believe that's where the drop happens. So will you build that up, or what will happen there? The sidewalk will be up near the road level. Okay. And then we'll slow back to meet And the you've already looked at the ability to do that and everything, right. and that's great. All right. I'm very happy with this. I, I, I'm looking forward to hearing what the residents say about um, this intersection. I'm hoping that it can be done before 2020. I thought it was going to be done before that, but, you know, at least it's coming. And I know we keep having more accidents up there, and they're pretty serious in nature. So I'm hoping that this is the best solution. Thank you for the hosting this meeting, and I look forward to hearing what the neighbors have to say. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm Alvin Girolamo. I'm from State Senator Michael Brady's office. And uh, this project is something he's been working on for many years. Uh, and it's good to see that we finally have a solution. I, uh, I kind of felt deflated myself when I heard 2020. Right. <laughs> so if you could explain a little bit more what the 2020 means. We had thought it would be 2018. Yeah. It is on fiscal year uh, 2019 at this time. That means that we will finalize and have to advertise the project by end of September of 2019. 19, yes. Uh, fiscal year starts from uh, October to September. So, uh, once it is advertised, there is a period of time. It takes, there are so many steps for uh, bid documents, opening the bid documents, awarding the contract. So, um, so we anticipate that um, it will, st construction will actually begin in spring when the weather is better. And sometimes if you have a you know, good winter, maybe it starts sooner, but this is how it's programmed right now. Yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, Jack Lally, L-A-L-L-Y. I'm the ward counselor. Um, I just wanted, you know, thank you guys for coming. Uh, this should, you know, as as with as with the the people who've spoken before, um, you know, uh, as 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 quick as we can do it. You know, we'd like to see it happen. Um, I do, I do have to mention on behalf of several constituents who could not make it, uh, there were a couple of people with uh, concerns over a round, uh, with a roundabout over a traffic light, uh, but I am hoping that the, you know, some of the documentation provided and, you know, the meeting in general, because it is, it is filmed, uh, I'm hoping that can help address, address some of that. Yeah, and we can provide the, um the information so it can be posted on on the website if you're interested. Well, thank you. I'd appreciate it. And thank you, guys. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Hi, everyone. I, I'm Bruce Hughes. I have two hats. I work for the Old Colony Planning Council, but I also am a member of the Abington Planning Board. And, you know, we in Abington are really in support of this. But my question is, have there been a lot of communication with the people who live at Chestnut Glen? Because, you know, that's the big apartment complex on the corner. And there's a lot of elderly people who live there. And, you know, I want this thing, but I just hope you're communicating with the folks who live there, because that's a, 
it's a big apartment complex in Abington, and uh, it's probably the, the biggest thing on that corner. So I hope you folks communicate that. But as far as the Abington Planning Board's concerned, we are in full support of this, and uh, we think it's a long overdue improvement. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to introduce themselves? Any officials that I for missed introducing? is Sheila Keen. I live on I, my name is Sheila Keen. I live on Randolph Ave. So I'm not right on the doorstep, but I'm certainly going to be affected. Um, I guess I have a couple of concerns. Um, you've noted that um, that Boundary Ave is on a downward incline and uh, Chestnut is uh, on a excuse me, an upward incline and chestnut is downward. So um, is that really going to, uh, um, to, to work with a rotary or a roundabout? I mean, I've never seen, I've never seen a, a roundabout that, 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 that had the, the connecting streets on such an angle. Um, also, um, we're in the middle of winter, and um, we haven't had too much snowfall, but I'm just uh, wondering what the impact of a, a design like that is going to have on uh, snow plowing in, in the future. Anyway. Yeah, just to quickly um, address those concerns, the, the lanes, even with the splitter islands there, are plenty wide for, for snow plows. There are a number of roundabouts in the north. They're not unusual to, to snow conditions. Uh, Commissioner Rowley is obviously in support of the roundabout, so I think he's comfortable with the ability for snow plows to get that cleared out and keep that free of snow. Um, as far as the grades, it wasn't easy. It is a challenge given the slopes. But in looking at the, if you look at the circulatory roadway itself, it's kind of like a, a pan or a plate. You know, kind of has a, it'll have a little bit of a tilt on it, but within design guidelines, you know. And that's why you'll see some of the slope limits are a little thicker immediately adjacent to the intersection, these green areas. Because again, we will have to bring right about here comes up about a foot from the existing grades. And right over here comes down about a foot, and then we slope back to meet the existing roadways. Yeah. Um, so it is something we have to work to accommodate. Mm -hmm. So. And on sharp on, to recognize that. And Boundary Ave, uh, you're going from uh, a paved cow path to all of a sudden uh, uh, sidewalks on both sides of the street. That's going to require um, a lot of taking of real estate. I'm not actually, sure how much, but yeah. it strikes me that uh, Boundary Ave is actually of, within the state, like the city layout. So they actually aren't right of way taking on Boundary Ave. It's actually pretty wide, but. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there'd be some impact to you know front edges of lawn. Like yeah. Thank you for your comments. Okay. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Uh, Shana Barnes, concerned citizen. Um, I actually have. Sorry, oh, Barnes, B A R N E S. Thank you. I actually have um, two questions. No, oh, two comments. No. Two questions and a comment. So my first comment, um, and actually the, uh, several representatives from OCPC are here, and last year, a year and a half ago, I went on a, a downtown walking tour with some folks from uh, DOT to determine what our pedestrian safety, uh, I guess, plan should be, and also bicycle, um, the installation of bicycle lanes in downtown, and some of the traffic patterns. And at that time, we determined actually right there, well, it wasn't, we didn't determine it, we, we were there, um, on the intersection of Legion Parkway and Center Street, there's one of those broken, um, like a broken island kind of situations. And the crosswalk only gave enough time for people if they hurry to get right to the middle. So I, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure you all will take a, a look at that when you're putting that into the design, but just to make sure that the crosswalk is enough time for folks to get all the way across, or if it's just designed for them to get to halfway, and then they wait for the next rotation to go the next half. So I just want to put that out there that we already have some of those things and it's confusing because by the time somebody steps off to the next side, the light's already green and then there's that tug of war between people and cars. Um, 
So another thing, what is the difference between a rotary and a roundabout? Did you? I know I was out of the room for a second, but is there a difference? There is actually. Yeah. Size? Yeah. Rotaries are very large. Okay. As you know from the Bourne Rotary and, and Sagamore Rotaries. Right. Um, specific to the roundabout, which started as uh, you know a European thing and really didn't come over into the United States until like the early '70s, they might have started, but it really caught on in the last 20 years. Okay. Um, with the roundabout, particularly the modern American roundabout, mm -hmm. three key elements. One is the deflection. You see how the approach roadways. Get my little red dot back. The approach roadways deflect as you enter the intersection. Okay. So you can't drive straight in. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. To the rotary, the roundabout part of it. So there's the deflection, there's the flare at entry. So the lane kind of flares uh -huh. as you approach a certain Victoria roadway. Okay. And yield at entry. Oh, okay. Everybody yields to the traffic that's already in the circle. Allegedly. Allegedly. Okay. Unlike some of the some of the roundabouts, some of the rotaries that uh, you may have seen. Okay. Those are three key distinctions, but the smaller size and those three elements are, are key to a roundabout. Okay. Thank you for that. And also, so I see the sidewalk. So how far are the sidewalks going to go down those streets? Um, is it just going to go to the next, uh, um, you know, discernible break in the street, or just is it going to trail off or? You can see better on the, the plans that are on the wall. Oh. We've also got construction plans on the table. But on North see. Quincy Street, the sidewalks will go to the project limits, um, which are just beyond oh. the view of this this slide. Okay. Um, again, the north side of Chestnut Street will go to the project limits, and then the town of Abington will carry it up to the, the residential area. Okay. Development. And then these will end at Randolph. Oh, okay. And they'll be on both sides. The yellow indicates both, both sides. sides of on, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Yes. All right. And and again, the Middle Island is that is that up for discussion, or is that going to be like a city decision, or is that going to be a dot decision of what that's going to be like? Is going to be what? like a tree, or maybe something indicative of Brockton, or you know, something like a statue or something? For sight distance reasons, it's got to be a low low treatment. In, oh. Okay. In, Wow. The, co the commissioner has already wow. put in his request for something that's zero to low maintenance. Oh, okay, okay. You know, so it might be a ground cover or, or even a, a sculptured concrete or something. Oh, okay. It, it can't be anything of any kind of height. Oh, okay. Okay, I thought it was a chance to beautify. All right, thank you. We don't want distraction. Oh, okay. to look at the oh right. Oh, right. Thanks. Pavement right. marking is also very, from a roundabout to road. Much better channelization in the roundabout. Oh, good evening. My name is Karen McKenney, M-C-K-E-N-N-E-Y, and I'm just here to hopefully help support this project. Um, my parents and their best friend were killed at this intersection in 2013. I'm sorry, can I interrupt you for a second? Um, we're going to stay here after the hearing, and the plans will be here, and we're going to have plenty of time if you want to look at the plans later, and we'll be here, and we can answer your questions, so if you, know, you want to... Listen to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, um, my parents and their best friend were killed at the intersection. Um, it, they were T-boned as they were crossing from Chestnut Street over, and a vehicle was coming down North Quincy Street and hit them broadside. Um, I, if I can spare anybody what my family has been through in the last five years, it would be a good thing. <laughs> I can't. I didn't think I'd get emotional. Sorry, you just never know when it's going to hit. Right. And going in and out of this for the last five years with lawyers and estates and trying to settle it all, it's just really been a big toll on myself and my family. I have two daughters, they were both going into their senior years, one in college, one in high school. So it wasn't just dealing with my own issues and all the legal issues. Thank you. It was also trying to deal with them. And, every, and the follow from all of it. It was much more than I could ever have imagined. And one of the lawyers just said that recently to us about when they first met our family that they didn't, we didn't realize or you know, had no idea what we were being faced with. And that was absolutely true. None of us are the same. None of our relationships are the same. It had a really large ripple effect. So I understand everybody's concerns. I mean, when we first saw the article, I met with the Brockton police shortly after the accident, and they had talked about putting in a traffic light. 
And when I saw the article about the roundabout, we were like, what, wait a minute, what about the light? And you know, we, I was talking with the other family that was involved with my parents. And um, when I started thinking about it and reading about it, and because um, my, my mother was driving the car, she'd driven through that intersection probably a thousand times. Um, it, we don't know what happened, we're never gonna know. We're not gonna know what happened, we're not gonna know why it happened, it just happened. But I think as a light, what they're talking about, you know, being able to run a, right, run a light and run a, a um, stop sign, you know, that's what happened, you know, there. I mean, I don't, I don't know if it would have been any different, you know, and just like, you know, the backup of the, the cars and all that. So I, I do think having thought about it unemotionally at the time, <laughs> that a roundabout makes more sense because it keeps traffic flowing and it will force people to slow down. And speed was involved in my parents' accident. And I know it's been involved in accidents since. And there was a 17-year-old girl who passed two months after my parents did. So it's, it's, there's been, at least the last time I looked, which was several years ago, over 100 accidents there. And I'm sure it's climbed since then and will continue to climb, which I think the 2020 thing is kind of an issue because what happens to these people in between, you know? And anything that can help prevent accidents, um, I'm certainly in, in support of. So anyhow, I just was trying to share my story from a different angle because people don't understand unless you're personally affected by something how that feels and nobody will understand what I've gone through and I and I get that too you know um, but it it's it, it's hard to explain and and I've met a lot of people on this journey and it hasn't been all negative so I think of the positive that can come out of my experience is that I don't have to hear about this again. I don't have to hear about somebody else dying or you know, people winding up on someone's lawn um, because of this intersection. So, you know, thank you for everything. Thank you. Hello, my name is Frank Chaplin, C-H-A-P-L-I-N. I live at 20 Boundary Ave. Uh, I've I've been there for 18 years. I've been running up the top of the street and when I hear the big bangs and the accidents and I've seen the deaths and I've been there for her parents' deaths. I've been brought to court a couple of times for another death that died in front of my driveway from West Chestnut Street down Boundary Ave and the car hit the tree and flipped over and stopped at my driveway. So I've been through a lot and I've seen a lot of people hurt. I have a ton of pictures on my phones and I've been giving them to Michelle DeBoer every time it happens. I'm so sick and tired of this. This is the worst intersection I've seen anywhere and there's accidents all the time. So I've been going to the police station, I've been to a bunch of meetings and we okayed a light. They told me that the light was going to happen, but it's going to take three years. I said, so what's going to happen between now and then? How many more people will die? How many more accidents are going to happen? So now that's the end of it. So now I see this. I love this. I want this. And I just, this is a great, better than a light to me. Yeah. Because it's going to stop yeah. all kinds of traffic and speed and there's going to be no congestion. It's just going to flow. So I just wish that the only bad part about tonight is 2020. I would love it to move faster. That's all I want to tell you. Yeah. You know? Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening. Um, my name is Pat Charamala, C-I-A-R-A-M-E-L-L-A. -L -L -A. I work with the Old Colony Planning Council. We maintain the Transportation Improvement Program, which funds this project. I am familiar with the project. Um, worked with Dan quite a bit on this project. Um, I, and I know it's uh, scheduled for 2019. I hope that it gets advertised in the early part of 2019, not the end of 2019, so that we could start it in 2019. So the council strongly supports this project and we hope that if we can expedite it a little quicker, it'd be yeah. great. Thank you. Thank you. You made a good point. Uh, when it's on 2018, uh, it means that it can be advertised, when the project is completed, <coughs> advertise any time from October to 18 through September to 19. So 
will work to get this speed up. Anyone else? Hi, um, my name is Wisleen Regis. Um, we live not too far from this intersection down on Armiston Street. I don't know if any of you guys said this already because we came late, but I was just wondering in the interim if it would be possible, because I know there's like um, the stop signs on Chestnut and Boundary, if it would be possible to have like four full stops while we wait for 2020, 2019, just a suggestion because um, I know I understand that it would slow traffic down a little bit, but um, I drive down <coughs> that way like every single day because that's the way to my commute. And it, like for folks coming, I'm always nervous because I'm like, I have to slow down anyways because I'm like, okay, I don't want these people rushing to like cut in front of me. So I think um, while we wait for the project to sort of like kick off, it would probably be helpful to have like a four way stop just to force everyone to take a pause because I know the speed limit is 30, people go 40, 45, so that's just a suggestion. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I got one more quick question. Uh, on the sidewalk, on the sidewalk. I'm sorry, do you mind saying your name oh, again? For oh, just that's okay. Case. Frank Chaplin, uh, that sidewalk's on Boundary Ave to the project limits. Does it ends at Randolph? Is, am I right? You see the sidewalks? Uh, that's probably for this gentleman at the end. Yeah, it's just shorter. Just it, yeah, the Randolph intersection. Right. How, I just would like it to go another 100 feet to the main street, which is... It's Boundary Street. Boundary Street, you know what I mean? If you end them right there, then there's no sidewalks for another 100 feet. I was wondering why they just can't make them safe and go all the way down to the end. You know? If I might, Jack Lally, um, that is something that is something that I can speak to the DPW commissioner about, and uh, Representative Dubois mentioned as well that she can try and see if the state has any, you know, any money for that, so we can handle that outside of the project, but oh, to work okay. with the project in order to in order to time it the same. That. Thank you. Yeah, let me go to a start with a bigger view of the project. Yeah. So the request was to extend the sidewalk, which presently ends at Randolph Avenue, all the way down, down here to Boundary Street. Yeah. Yeah. The town of Atkinson is going to fill in up here. Yeah. Um, the request was to see if we could extend the sidewalk down Boundary Avenue to Boundary Street. Because from Randolph, it's literally 100 feet. Right. And you're on the main. How much would that cost to extend? Yeah. Roughly, roughly. You're asking a lot of my calculator. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's At about $75 a square yard per sidewalk. Uh, I, I can't even think that fast, I'm sorry. <laughs> Is I don't want to take a guess. Is this boundary? If you'd like, we can get that. No. Yeah, it's pretty Yeah, it's not that much yeah. money. Yeah. Just a, a couple things to think about that would weigh into that conversation. Once we had, once we started, once you do construct something on that, you've got to. That section of Boundary Ave is still a little bit narrow. Probably have to be widened to the full, to the width that the new section is. Widen to 28 feet. Add the sidewalk both sides. You know, so it's something that we can certainly look at, talk to the city about. Thank you. May I ask another question? Please. Michelle Dubois, um, I'm wondering, can you talk a little bit about the land taking? So the way it seemed like the intersection was being reconfigured, it seemed like you were going to have to take more land on the Abington side of North Quincy for lack of, um, you know, just for explaining where I'm thinking. Um, what part of the stage are you at with the land taking? Is the, am I correct in saying that more of the land would have to be taken from the Abington side, or what, how, can you talk a little bit about that land taking part? Um, preliminarily, you probably are seeing slightly larger takings on the Abington side. Um, if we were to shift the roundabout 
west? I'm not saying to do that. Okay. I'm not asking to do that. It's there's more seeds, there's more land on the Abingdon side yeah, to take. Woods. That's not you. So I, I think that's great. I was just wondering what stage of the process is and Jerry, what's the, the timeline for that? Uh, in regard to trying to answer your question right now, it won't be a taking per se. It's okay. going to be a permanent easement. Okay. All right. So a permanent easement property owner still has the right to own that land, okay? However, if the town has to get on that property, so it's a permanent easement, it's always gonna be there, it's gonna be recorded, okay? And we got a temporary easement that once the project is finished, the temporary easement's gone, okay? So where I see the sidewalks right now, Michelle Dubois, where I see the sidewalks right now, are those all on um, what we would call city or town land? As far as I can recall, with the sidewalks on now, uh, you may be able to help me here. There is, some is that it, it, it's on the layout now. For for the majority of the sidewalk, it's on the layout. So it wouldn't well, really... Take a small Piece All right. To get the sidewalk in. So maybe some people, when they look at the intersection and then they see this, they might say, "Oh my gosh, you're gonna have to take a lot of a person's land," because it seems like to the you know un uneducated observer or the non-expert that since it's wooded, it can't be part of the layout. But you're saying just because it's wooded doesn't mean it's not municipal land and not part of the intersection already. Yeah. It's just not being utilized. Yeah. I mean, that, if you speak to the property owner, the property owner may even think right. it's their property. Right. But once it's staked out and the actual layout line is staked out, they'll see it. Right. And they'll understand, well, okay, you're going to have to come on to my property so much or permanent easement is needed on that squeeze that sidewalk in. All right. But what needs to happen now is the town or the city will need to sit down with the property owners and go over that specifically. So would the town of Abington have to sit down with the Abington yeah. residents and the town of Brockton with the Brockton residents? Right. The, each city and town will be responsible for where the property owners are. Thank you. And uh, I believe we have the right-of-way plans. We do have the 20 yes. right away so at the end of the uh, hearing, if you want to look at the plans, uh, the property lines are shown, so we can look at that. And also, the process cannot really start till we get farther, you know, into the design. So the you know, 25% is more of a general layout is set. But as we design, design far further de details, perhaps at the end of the next stage is where um, you know the towns and cities, it has to get to a certain point and also in terms of uh, permitting before we can, they can start talking to folks about takings. And Does it go, things. what's the next, what, 50 yes. percent? Uh, it's called 75 percent. Oh, so we jump from 25 to 75? Yeah. And 25 percent is actually a very, you know, it's a substantial stage and this hearing is a very, you know, firm point in how we progress the project. After 25%, it's, you know, it so could be. So when you leave here today, yes. we're going right to 75%? I mean, how far? How long? What's the time When's line? the next meeting that we're at 75%? Uh, there are, there is no official meeting from DOT, oh. but the town um, and the city is, you know, a lot of times they meet, have informational meeting with the um, residences, and uh, so if it gets Can't to a point, we'll do that. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yes. Okay. When do you think that might be? That's what I'm just kind of. Uh, what? That when do you think that this project may be at a 75% stage? If it's at a 25% stage in, say, you know, the end of January 2018. When could you imagine the 75% stage might be? Perfect. June 2018? No, July? December? No. August. August, maybe 2018? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had this schedule. Tomorrow? <laughs> when, uh, Tomorrow. When, when, the next, yeah. when the next meeting is announced, yes. um, I will... <laughs> Leaf, you know, I, I will send a letter to the immediate neighbors 
uh, as I did this time, yeah. and I'll put it on Facebook, and I will send out an email to everyone on my email list. So for every ward meeting and community meeting like this that happens yeah. in Ward 6 or affects Ward 6, I like to notify uh, constituents just by emailing them. That's all I use the email list for. Um, for anyone at home, uh, my email is jlally, L-A-L-L-Y, at C-O-B-M-A dot U-S. And for everyone here, uh, there is a notebook where you can sign up uh, in the back. And we can give you a copy of the um, uh, sign-in sheet. But I'm not sure if people, folks, have put in their uh, email addresses. But please do add it if you like, and we'll give you a copy of that. Um, uh, the next stage, it will take some time, it will take a few months for the designer because there are much more detail involved in designing that. And then what they do is they design that and then submit it to DOT and we have an internal review process and that's going to take a few months. And the reason for it is, you know, there is more um, focus on projects that are being advertised that year. So those are reviewed in a shorter period of time versus the one that are in next year. So there's a process that takes, but um, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't have the schedule in mind, so I can't give you more details, but we can communicate that with your office. Thank you. Uh, yes, please. Steve Conrad, C-O-N-R-A-D. The property lines you guys are talking about on Boundary Street for the residents, yes. are we taking property line to build this roundabout? Are we impacting their property line? To build this roundabout, is it, are we, are we going into their property? Is, it, is that gonna affect the build, the time? The if they don't allow it, I mean, the is there? The properties are impacting the permanent and they're aware of what's going on you guys are what's the impact on that though if they say no uh well there is a negotiation process that takes <coughs> place between the um has that the, negotiating already started no no we can't start till we get far into the design that we know how much i mean this is very preliminary design as you refine the design you know how much area you need Okay. So that's not going to happen until we get to that stage. Okay, thank you. But as uh, Jerry mentioned, it is, you know, whatever, whatever projects that is federally funded, it goes through a very rigorous process, and it needs to follow all the steps that are required with, for federal funding. I mean, what, what the plans show now on the corner lot, yeah. uh, there's two permanent easements and two temporary easements that are needed at this point yes. project. Um, so at once the once the, the other plans, the revised plans come out, the city will sit down with these property owners and go over that specifically with them as to what is needed, what's going to happen with their property, and give them the choice uh, of the appraisal and get paid for the easements if they want. But my question is okay great, they get paid the price wise, whatever, but what if they say no? What if, they, what if they're not cooperating with the, with the uh, bill? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I have a question. Yes, please. One, I'm a new, oh, okay, Bonnie Jules. I'm at one boundary. Do you mind coming up to the microphone? I'm sorry, we just have to record. <laughs> you can do it. Jules, J U L E S. I'm at one boundary Ave. I'm a new homeowner, and had I known that there were so many accidents, I wouldn't have bought. But I'm, I'm angry. But anyhow, um, when you say it's going to be a roundabout, it's going to be flat. A truck can go right over that because I've seen I've stayed inside my living room and see trucks zooming right on 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 uh, what's that street North Quincy. North Quincy. Uh, the better part <coughs> is not the green 
part is not flat. It's not flat. It's not no. going to be flat. No, it's not flat. No. It's, not okay. flat. Okay. it's just that brown section is is a surface that trucks can go over. Oh, if, if, if they need to turn. Yeah, but not windy. Yeah. Okay. But it's not comfortable yeah. enough for us. Because to I, every day I'm afraid that one day I'll come home and I'll, my, there'll be a truck inside. My, no, my, my no. That's, well, that's the whole purpose of the roundabout is you have an yeah. obstruction in the middle of the It'll intersection. It'll be a raised curve around that center portion that will discourage okay. a straight drive through. Okay. Yeah, there'll be a beveled curve around this edge. And will there be will, will there be signs along the way for, to announce the roundabout or also a, um, a slowdown? That because this is like well, an a expressway. Well, there's signs there now that say dangerous intersection. Oh yeah, it's so no, small. Nobody pays attention. Nobody looks at it. You know. And there's going to be pavement markings that lead you into the you know roundabout and yeah. how, guide you how to turn around. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks. It's good to see the pavement markings better on the, the plant on the Yeah, we can, um, you know, show you yeah. at, at the end. Yeah, like to oh, sure, of course. Okay. Um, any other questions? So, um, so again, I want to remind you about the mailing sheet at the end of the, your handout. Please use it if you want to communicate with us farther. If you mail it within 10 days of tonight's hearing, it will become part of the official record of the hearing. And um, again, uh, just repeat that. We will be here tonight after the official part of the hearing is over. As long as you want to talk to us and uh, we can specifically you know, discuss any particular area of interest to you. And thank you very much for allowing us to use uh, the school and for coming and making this a very interesting hearing. Um, the mm -hmm. hearing is closed to 7.40. It's officially closed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.